I am thrilled to be in Provo to see your beautiful university, thrilled to be at a university where an American Heritage course is part of the required curriculum and where the Constitution is being taught as a matter of serious consequence for all of us who are citizens of this great country. I am also, as a Yale graduate, th thrilled to see that big Y up on your mountain. <laughs> It was extremely thoughtful of you. <laughs> I just wish that my editor-in-chief were here, Rosalie, my wife, uh, who is also a mission control in our family and um, secretary of the treasury <laughs> and chair of the ethics committee. When uh, John Adams uh, received the uh, Pulitzer Prize, we got the word on April 8th, which is Rosalie's birthday, and everybody in the family felt that was entirely appropriate. She's my, um, she's my North Star. She's the star I steer by, and, and um, I'm very proud of her. I wonder if you have any idea what it's like to hear that you've won the Pulitzer Prize. It's not like one of those scenes in the commercials for Publishers Clearing House. Um, <laughs> what happens is that the phone rings and it's a reporter and the reporter asks you if you are who you are and you affirm that you are and then the reporter asks if you're aware that you've just won the Pulitzer Prize and you say you're not aware of that and then the reporter asks you how you feel. <laughs> and of course you have no idea how you feel because you're trying to catch your breath and wonder which one of your friends with a macabre sense of humor is <laughs> pulling one on you. <laughs> but the call came from uh, uh, Hillel Itali, who writes for the AP, and I no sooner did I hang up than the phone rang again, and it was Bob Hoover from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, which with many of the same questions, Pittsburgh is my hometown. Then David Mahegan called from the Boston Globe, and a call came in from National Public Radio and another one for you from USA Today. And by this time, I suppose it was on CNN or somewhere, and so friends and family started calling, and the phone just kept ringing and ringing all afternoon, beginning at about 3.10. And, um, and because it was Rosalie's birthday, our two daughters were there, and some of their children and neighbors came by, and it was very festive. And it wasn't until about um, eight, quarter of eight, that the house became still. There were no more phone calls, and we settled down for a nice, quiet family dinner until about 8.10 when the phone rang again. And Rosalie got up to answer it, and we heard her say, yes, yes, that's right. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, just hold the line a minute, please. And she covered up the phone with her hand and she said, it's Christine Maxwell from the Christian Science Monitor. Are you willing to speak with her? And I said, sure. So I got up and went into the living room and picked up the other phone and said, hello. And she said, Mr. McCullough, I said, yes. She said, this is Christine Maxwell from the Christian Science Monitor. I said, yes. She said, I was wondering if you're aware of our special 23-week trial subscription for just 19... <laughs> <clears throat> One of my sons said that that was a lesson in physics. The balloon goes up and the balloon comes down. 